The USS Cole bombing was a suicide attack by the terrorist group Al-Qaeda against USS Cole, a guided missile destroyer of the United States Navy, on 12 October 2000, while she was being refueled in Yemen's Aden Harbor. 17 U.S. Navy sailors were killed and 39 injured in the deadliest attack against a United States naval vessel since the USS Stark incident in 1987. Al-Qaeda claimed responsibility for the attack against the United States. A U.S. judge has held Sudan liable for the attack, while another has released over $13 million in Sudanese frozen assets to the relatives of those killed. The United States Navy has reconsidered its rules of engagement in response to this attack. On 13 February 2020, the government of Sudan agreed to compensate families of the sailors who died in the bombing. Attack On the morning of Thursday 12 October 2000, Cole, under the command of Commander Kirk Lippold, docked in Aden Harbor for a routine fuel stop. Cole completed mooring at 9.30 and began refueling at 10.30. Around 11.18 local time, a small fiberglass boat carrying C-4 explosives and two suicide bombers approached the port side of the destroyer and exploded, creating a 40 by 60 foot gash in the ship's port side, according to the memorial plate to those who lost their lives. Former CIA intelligence officer Robert Finker said the blast appeared to be caused by C-4 explosives molded into a shaped charge against the hull of the boat. Around 400 to 700 pounds of explosive were used. Much of the blast entered a mechanical space below the ship's galley, violently pushing up the deck, thereby killing crew members who were lining up for lunch. The crew fought flooding in the engineering spaces and had the damage under control after three days. Divers inspected the hull and determined that the keel had not been damaged. The sailors injured in the explosion were taken to the United States Army's Landstuhl Regional Medical Center near Anstein, Germany, before being sent to the United States. The attack was the deadliest against a U.S. naval vessel since the Iraqi attack on USS Stark on 17 May 1987. The asymmetric warfare attack was organized and directed by the terrorist organization Al-Qaeda. In June 2001, an Al-Qaeda recruitment video featuring Osama bin Laden boasted about the attack and encouraged similar attacks. Al-Qaeda had previously attempted a similar but less publicized attack on the U.S. Navy destroyer USS The Sullivans while in Port of Aden on 3 January 2000, as a part of the 2000 Millennium attack plots. The plan was to load a boat full of explosives and detonate them near the Sullivans. However, the boat was so overladen that it sank, forcing the attack to be abandoned. Planning for the October attack was discussed at the Kuala Lumpur Al-Qaeda summit from 5 to 8 January, shortly after the failed attempt. Along with other plotters, the summit was attended by future the 11th of September hijacker Khalid Al-Midhar, who then traveled to San Diego, California. On the 10th of June 2000, Midhar left San Diego to visit his wife in Yemen at a house also used as a communications hub for Al-Qaeda. After the bombing, Yemeni Prime Minister Abdul Karim al reported that Midhar had been one of the key planners of the attack and had been in the country at the time of the attacks. He later returned to the United States to participate in 9-11 hijack of American Airlines Flight 77, which flew into the Pentagon, killing 184 victims. Rescue the first naval ship on the scene to assist the stricken coal was HMS Marlborough, a Type 23 frigate of the Royal Navy, under the command of Captain Anthony Ricks. She was on passage to the UK after a six-month deployment in the Gulf. Marlborough had full medical and damage control teams on board, and when her offer of assistance was accepted she immediately diverted to Aden. Eleven of the most badly injured sailors were sent via medevac to a French military hospital in Djibouti and underwent surgery before being sent to Germany. The first U.S. military support to arrive was a U.S. Air Force Security Forces Quick Reaction Force from the 363rd Expeditionary Security Forces Squadron, 363rd Air Expeditionary Wing, based in Prince Sultan Air Base, Saudi Arabia. 
transported by C-130 aircraft. They were followed by another small group of United States Marines from the Interim Marine Corps Security Force Company, Bahrain flown in by P-3 Orion aircraft. Both forces landed a few hours after the ship was struck and were reinforced by a U.S. Marine platoon with the 1st Fleet Anti-Terrorism Security Team Company, based out of Norfolk, Virginia. The Marines from 6th Platoon, 1st Fast arrived on 13 October from Norfolk, Virginia. The Fast Platoon and Security Forces Airmen secured coal and a nearby hotel that was housing the U.S. Ambassador to Yemen. USS Donald Cook and USS Hawes made best speed to arrive in the vicinity of Aden that afternoon providing repair and logistical support. USNS Catawba, USS Camden, Anchorage, Duluth and Tarawa arrived in Aden some days later, providing watch relief crews, harbor security, damage control equipment, billeting, and food service for the crew of coal. LCU 1666 provided daily runs from Tarawa with hot food and supplies, and ferried personnel to and from all other naval vessels supporting coal. In the remaining days LCU 1632 and various personnel from LCU 1666 teamed up to patrol around coal. In a form of transport pioneered in 1988 by USS Samuel B. Roberts aboard Mighty Servant 2. Coal was hauled from Aden aboard the Dutch semi-submersible heavy lift salvage ship MV Blue Marlin. Coal arrived in Pascagoula, Mississippi, on 13 December 2000, where she was rebuilt. Investigation and Responsibility FBI and NCIS agents sent to Yemen to investigate the bombing worked in an extremely hostile environment. Speakers in the Yemeni parliament calling for jihad against America, were broadcast on local television each night. After some delay, the Yemenis produced a CCTV video from a harborside security camera, but the crucial moment of the explosion was deleted. Al-Qaeda, the notorious terrorist organization founded by Osama bin Laden, claimed responsibility. On 14 March 2007, a federal judge in the United States, Robert G. DeMar, ruled that the Sudanese government was liable for the bombing. The ruling was issued in response to a lawsuit filed against the Sudanese government by relatives of the victims, who claim that al-Qaeda could not have carried out the attacks without the support of Sudanese officials. On 30 June 2008, Brigadier General Thomas W. Hartman, legal advisor to the U.S. military tribunal system, announced charges are being sworn against Abd al-Rahim al-Nashiri, a Saudi Arabian citizen of Yemeni descent, who has been held at the military prison in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, since 2006. According to the Pentagon, the charges have been defined as organizing and directing the bombing of USS Cole. The Pentagon will seek the death penalty. Aftermath The destroyer's rules of engagement, as approved by the Pentagon, kept her guards from firing upon the small boat, which was not known to be loaded with explosives, as it neared them without first obtaining permission from Cole's captain or another officer. This resulted in the sailors on watch not engaging the oncoming small boat out of fear of being court-martialed for firing on foreign civilians without the captain or another officer's orders. This was revised soon after. The coal bombing plays a highly visible role in Navy damage control training, which begins in boot camp with a pre-graduation battle stations event. The coal scenario, launched in 2007, takes place aboard a realistic destroyer mock-up housed at Naval Station Great Lakes, Illinois. The training focuses on preparing recruits for damage control challenges they may face in the fleet. On 13 February 2020, the government of Sudan announced that it had reached an agreement to compensate the families of the USS Cole victims, a prerequisite for being removed from the state sponsors of terrorism list. In its announcement, the Sudanese government reiterated that it was not responsible for the bombing but stated that its goal was to normalize relations with the United States and other countries and to settle historical claims arising from the previous regime. The agreement was finalized on 3 April 2020. 
A memorial to the victims of the attack was dedicated at Norfolk Naval Station in Virginia on 12 October 2001. It was erected along the shore of Willoughby Bay, and overlooks the channel used by Navy ships transiting to sea. Seventeen low-level markers stand for the youthfulness of the sailors, whose lives were cut short. Three tall granite monoliths, each bearing brass plaques, stand for the three colors of the American flag. A set of brown markers encircling the memorial symbolize the darkness and despair that overcame the ship. In addition, 28 black pine trees were planted to represent the 17 sailors and the 11 children they left behind. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and check back for our next video.